Hi guys and welcome to another chip technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about interacting from your chip with one of these cheap Bluetooth iTag trackers. So let, let's talk about this thing. So available on eBay for just uh, a couple of dollars, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, uh, one can buy eye tags. Now what is an eye tag? An eye tag is basically a Bluetooth low energy BLE transmitter and uh, using this BLE transmitter it takes a, uh, a small uh, cell battery apparently it's got a life of up to six months it can pair with another Bluetooth device so why would you want to pair a little key fob like this with a Bluetooth device? Well a couple of reasons. First of all once it's paired, if it should become unpaired, for example, the distance between the uh, two devices becomes too great that they lose uh, connectivity, the key fob, the eye tag, will start beeping. So what that means is that if you attach this tag to something that you don't want to lose, then when it goes out of range, uh, the key fob will start beeping and maybe alert somebody that uh, you want to find it. Secondly, the, if it goes out of range, the uh, device which has made the connection, maybe your cell phone, uh, can start beeping as well to let you know that uh, the device uh, is now out of range. So for example, imagine attaching this to your billfold or your car keys or something you don't want to lose, a pet or a child, that sort of thing. And if they go out of range of your Bluetooth uh, res uh, transmitter, then you'll know about it. Finally, if you look closely at this diet, at this image, notice it's got a button on it. When you click that button, that causes a notification event to be sent to your Bluetooth device. All right, so that's the high levels of it. Two dollars, how can you resist playing with one of those? So the name of the game then is how do we use chip to interact with one of these iTag key fobs? And after a bit of study, it turned out to be quite simple. Now we need to use Bluetooth low energy commands and I'm not even going to begin to try and explain how those commands work. Uh, one can go to the manual pages and the Bluetooth low energy specifications and study deep on it. But we'll, what we're going to do in this tutorial is show you how to get this thing working. So let's get started. Uh, first thing we want to do is I've got in my hand one of these Bluetooth low energy tags and when I click it or when I hold it it powers on and gives a little beep to tell me that it's powered on so I now have my BLE tag close to me and powered on now from the chip environment I run a tool called sudo HCI tool LE scan and what that does is that performs a Bluetooth low energy scan looking for available devices and it found my iTag so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy into my clipboard of this address because that becomes useful that becomes not useful it becomes important so now we know the address of the tag uh, what I can now do is I can run a second tool called GAT tool. Notice the three T's, GAT tool. Now GAT tool, GAT rather, is part of the specification of Bluetooth Low Energy. It's a protocol used to communicate between Bluetooth Low Energy devices. So I start it in its interactive mode and then I issue the connect subcommand to connect to my device and it says we are now connected. So there's now a pairing between, or not even a pairing, a connection between the chip and my Bluetooth low energy device. Well that's great. Now what? Now watch what happens if I disconnect the connection. And those beeps you're hearing are now coming from my iTag device. If I reform the connection or hit the button on the front of it, the beeping stops. Excellent. So now from my uh, chip, I'm now able to connect to the iTag. And if we lose the connection, the iTag starts beeping. Oh, that's great.
Now what if we wanted to programmatically make the eye tag start to beep? Well, we can do that too. Well, we can do that too. First of all, we run the command primary. Now what primary does is interrogates the Bluetooth device to which we're connected and returns the list of services that are primarily available from that device. Now you're going to have to trust me on all this gobbledygook, but if we were to look up uh, the command, the specification for this service, the one that begins 1802, we would find that on the internet that corresponds to locating a device. Now notice these handles here. These are the uh, think of them like the registers on the Bluetooth device. So now if I interrogate these registers, char desk from register 9 to register B, which is the, the range here, and give them a think, it comes back and it tells me these are what these different registers mean. Now, if we were to decode this register, 2A06, we would find that that is the control where we send an event to the Bluetooth device which would cause it to alert. So, now we're getting up to the interesting things. If I issue the command char write command to the register B, number 10, and if I issue that, my Bluetooth tag starts to beep. If I send it zero, my Bluetooth com uh, device stops beeping. Now this is while the connection is still established. If I run it again, starts beeping, stops beeping. So now we've seen that from the chip, I can cause action, in this case the, uh, the uh, uh, beeping, on the tag to commence and stop. Now there's one thing left for me to show you, and that is that the iTag has a nice button on it. So what happens if I press that button while we're connected? I'm pressing it now. Notice we receive an indication back at chip that the button was pressed. Let me press it again. We keep receiving indications. Let me press it twice. We receive two indications in short order between each other. So now we see that I can cause the chip to be made aware of an interaction with this little key fob. And again, remember the key fob is small, can fit in your keychain. It's less than two, or it's about two dollars, doesn't cost much. The battery life on it is supposed to be about six months. There are other services available from this device, uh, nothing exciting except maybe the battery level. You can interrogate its onboard battery. Now, right now it says my battery is charged at 99%. That was through other tests. I haven't had it long enough to see how it uh, deteriorates over time, but we will see. And uh, that's about the end of the tutorial. Remember what we did here. We looked at the iTag device, we looked at finding its address, we looked at forming a connection to the iTag device, we saw that when we disconnected from it, the iTag starts beeping, we saw that we could send a command to the iTag to cause it to beep while we were still in range, we could stop it beeping, and finally when we press the button on the iTag, that causes an event, a notification, to be sent to the chip. I hope you all found this useful, and uh, I'm looking forward to making more chip technical tutorials in the future. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.